What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the week's hottest topics. Damn it, I didn't get what the week it is. Um, like I said, this is hot topics, so we are here to discuss what's hot, what's trending for this week. This is the week of, I believe, it was July the 11th through the 16th. So, with that being said, let's discuss what's hot this week, shall we? All right, you guys, so before we go ahead and get into this video, like I said, this is the week's hottest topics. This is for the week of the 11th or 16th, and you guys are getting this on July the 16th because um, you guys are getting this on the 16th. Well, you guys are getting this um, early, and I'm filming this on the 15th because today that you guys are seeing this is my birthday. It's my 32nd birthday, so I don't really want to do anything today for my birthday so we're doing this video now so i'm probably so the videos that i'm do that i do on friday will be moved to saturday so you guys will be getting love love after lockup you guys will get that on saturday morning sometime and you guys will get growing up hip-hop on saturday because again birthday don't want to do anything so uh yeah leave leave your comments you know wish me happy birthday and with that being said Let's talk about what I want to talk about this week in Hot Topics, shall we? All right, you guys. So we have to extend a rest in peace, you guys. So um, the news came out on... I don't know when this news came out. So it came out that actor Charlie Robinson passed away at the age of 75. Now, you, if you are asking yourself, who was Charlie Robinson? Now, for me, I did see what they were talking about. He was on a show called Night Court. I don't know when that show came out. It might be before my time, but I most know him from the time he played on um, Set It Off. And <clears throat> Set It Off is one of my favorite movies. I'm in a bind, Nate. You guys remember the scene where Jada Pinkett Smith was asking him for the money for her brother, you know, for her brother, right? And she went and had sex with him. So that is who he is. For the young people who don't know him, or just people, you know, for people who are my age that that's all we know that's all i know of him is him as nate from the movie set it off so yeah he passed away on july 11th it doesn't say what the cause of death is at this point but he did pass away at 75 so condolences go out to his family i don't i don't like to see if he had any kids any grandkids but condolences go out to any you know all of his loved ones who are now you know mourning his death so yeah my condolences go out to the family and friends and the fans alike so with that being said, um, let's move on, you guys. But once again, rest in peace to Charlie Robinson, you guys. All right, you guys. So the first thing that I want to talk about is I watched this interview, which watched the interview on YouTube with Candy and with Nibia. It was her, her um on that note, right? And you guys know with on that note, she talks about things in the music industry. So she did an interview with Nibia and this was an interesting interview with Nibia. You know, we got a lot about Nibia. And very, you know, very good interview. I will give it to Candy. She's doing very good when it comes to interviewing people. So Nibia. How old is Nibia, you guys? I need to look that up. But that's neither here nor there. The thing about Nibia is Nibia has been through a lot in her young life. And my heart really, really went out to Nibia watching that interview with candy right so nibia was telling us about you know how she got into the music industry that you know she was shy and that um you know as far as the music industry she met this guy right that became her manager now she said that this guy was like she didn't really say how old he was but she did say that the man was older than her she said about like she said he wasn't in his 30s he was probably like in his 40s and that was a red flag right there. I'm like, he's a creep. I'm saying he's a creep. Creeping on, you know, creeping and preying on. She said she was, what, 15, 14, 15 at the time. So then she's talking about that and how, you know, they will record, you know, her songs. I think it was um, Don't Mess With My Man or, or something like that. Just interesting. She was talking about how she would, you know, go, she would travel with him solo. And I'm like, wow your parents actually let you go away with this man that you said was like in his 40s or something like that i'm like wow that's very interesting she said you know she and the man had a sexual relationship 
Then she said at one point she tried to run away from her parents, but her mom called the cops and they brought her back. And she, she, she said this was when she was 15. And then at 16, she told her mom she was leaving once again and she left and she moved in with him and she stayed with him. And they continued to have a relationship and a sexual relationship. I'm like, oh my God, like damn. And then she talked about, you know, how they gave him the money for her second album and he was spending that money. No album was, you know, ever came up and she owed them, you know, Jive Records that money back. Then she also talked about, well, the fact that she got with another guy and that when she got with that guy, he ruined that relationship. And then after that, that's when she got with Wayne. And she said, and then before she, you know, her when she went to New Orleans, before she went to New Orleans, she and this man got into a physical altercation with one another, right? God, Nivea, like I said, Nivea just has really, really, really been through a lot of stuff in her life. And I just really felt bad for, you know, I just really felt bad for Nivea. Um, what else? So then she said when she went down to New Orleans and, you know, she was with Wayne, that, you know, she and Wayne lived in a house together. But then at some point, Wayne moved her into an apartment and he moved Toya back into the house. And that's when he and Toya got married. And, you know, she went back to Atlanta, stayed with her family. And then, you know, she was telling us how she and Dream got together. So she said when she got back to Atlanta, she reached out to her label and she told them that um, she wanted to, um, you know, work on her second album. You might hear somebody going up the street. So she wanted to work on her second album and, you know, she did that. So then she and Dream worked on some songs together and... She said that, you know, when it came down to her and Dream at first, they were just friends. And then about a month later, you know, they got in, they got engaged, then they got married, then they had their kids. And then, you know, they talked, she talked about the disintegration of their relationship. She didn't really go into detail about what happened with their relationship, but he was with another woman. Then after, you know, they got the divorce, she went back to Wayne, right? And, you know, she, she never introduced her kids to Wayne. So she was just going down to New Orleans and going back to Atlanta to be with her kids. And then she got pregnant with her, with her youngest child, with Wayne. And then, you know, she was talking about the fact that, you know, she and Lauren London, they became very close to each other throughout their pregnancy because Wayne sat her down and told her that Lauren London was pregnant as well. And, you know, she then talked about her drug issues. And, man, when Nivea talked about her drug issues, I just broke down and cried because I was like, damn. Because when Candy was talking to her, she was like, did you, because because whenever you was talking about after she had her kids, I'm like, she sounded like she had postpartum depression. And then she talked about how she got into cocaine. Whew, my heart goes out to Nivea, man. She is a strong young lady. Like, she's been through a lot. Really has been through a lot, you guys. Um, but I'm going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys, let's talk about the Emmy nominations. So the Emmy nominations came out the other day. I got an alert on my phone on Twitter about the Emmy nominations. I was like, eh, it's the Emmys. I'm not going to look into it and see what's going on. But with the Emmy nominations, we got a lot of shows, a lot of black actors and actresses who are nominated for. My bad, y'all didn't mean to your face, who are nominated for Emmys. It's a lot of them. And we have a first in this one. And the first is that MJ Rodriguez, who plays who played Blanca um, on the hit television show Pose, she is nominated for an award, and she is the first transgender woman to be nominated for an award. So congratulations definitely go out to her. So then I'm going to go down the list. Um, I know that Lovecraft Country currently leads the pack with 18 nominations. Now, the, the interesting thing is with Lovecraft Country, Lovecraft Country was actually just canceled. It was not renewed for a season two. And I know that the creator, Misha Green, she just ain't the deal with Apple TV. So people are wondering and speculating if, you know, Lovecraft Country could go over to um, Apple, Plus, Apple, Plus, Apple, Apple TV. So we'll go down the list. Now, I know that I read that a, bl a black lady sketch show, which is produced by... Um, it's actually Issa Rae and Robin Thede who do that. They got five nominations. We have Anthony Anderson, who's nominated for an award. Tracy Ellis Ross, as I said, MJ Rodriguez. Michaela Cole, cool Cole. She plays on the show, I May Destroy You. 
which comes on HBO. It actually premiered last year when um, Insecure was going. I think it was the season finale of Insecure, and it followed it. So then we have, um, like I said, Lovecraft Country leads with 18 nominations. Um, I cannot pronounce this young man's name, but he played on the show Bridgerton. His name is spelled R E G E G. Is it Reggae John Page? You guys correct me, I don't know it. Kenan Thompson is nominated for an award, as well as Jonathan Majors. Sterling K. Brown is nominated. Uzo Aduba, Journey Smollett, Billy Porter, Trevor Noah, RuPaul's Drag Race, Race is nominated. I know Damon John from Shark Tank is nominated. Um, Cynthia Erivo is nominated and Leslie Odom Jr. Now there are more, I didn't get everybody's names, but those are just to name a few. And like I said with Lovecraft Country, it leads the pack and two of the stars of Lovecraft Country are nominated. That's Journey and that is Jonathan Page. <clears throat> Very interesting, isn't it, you guys, that they did not renew the season did not renew the show for a second season, but it leads the pack with 18 nominations. So I think like I said before, with um, Misha Green signing on with Apple TV, I would I would expect for them to say, hey, with since they got so many nominations, let's renew the show. Because I know Misha was already planning for a season two and, and beyond. Now I know with Lovecraft Country, that show was based off of a book and season one literally ended what the book was. But there are plenty of other shows that have done you know stuff like that, like Pretty Little Liars. That show was based off of a book, but they spun it so f they spun it and it went completely different from what the books were. And even with Pretty Little Liars, with the success of that show, the um the the writer of the book, she wrote more books. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Congratulations to everyone who's nominated. I will be watching the Emmys this year. I don't know when it is, but I'll definitely be watching. I'm rooting for everyone who is what? Plaque. All right, you guys, so let's move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's discuss Wendy Williams. What is going on with Wendy lately? So there are, so my little cousins have lead flies in the house. You guys might see flies flying around, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so Wendy Williams, I just don't know what's going on with Wendy these days. Like I just talked about Wendy last week when she was discussing the stuff with um, Tabitha Brown, right? Well, after that video, after that video, I think it was that same, I think it was last Friday, where Wendy was on her show and she was talking about this TikTok star, right? She was talking about how many followers he has on TikTok. And um, she, she was talking about how many followers he has on TikTok, which I was like, okay, what does that have to do with anything? It was just the way that she was talking. I'm just like, why is she talking? Like, I'm, I thought... I didn't know where she was going with this. I thought she was going to land a, a joke about this or something, but she was talking about how many followers she has on TikTok. But then she was like, well, I have these many followers on Instagram, but Lil Kev says that Instagram is not popular anymore. And it was just the way that she was talking about the young man. I was like, okay. Like, and then she's like, look at, this is him right here. It was just how cav it was just how cavalier and crash she was talking about him. And I was just like, what is it about him like did he do is he in jail did he get someone pregnant like what happened like i was just really sitting there thinking like what has this young man done to something like did he do something to somebody then she said oh he was killed i was like what and even her audience goes <gasps> her audience gasped and i was just like what i was confused i was like why would you sit there and and say all of that to then end up saying he got killed and he was 19 years old. Now his family is upset. His family wants the Wendy Williams show canceled. His family, they want, you know, for they, they, they're getting a lawyer from what I've heard. I don't really know what they want a lawyer for. And I don't think them can, I don't think canceling, I mean, what Wendy said was wrong and which, how she did it was, I mean, like, damn, the young man lost his life and that's, the, that's all you can that's all you can do is talk about how many followers on TikTok he has and ask who knows him who's heard of him which when she said who's heard of him I was like I've never heard of this young man but then when she sat there and, and followed up with he got killed I was like wow this is where we're going like I was just like damn Wendy 
Like, I just wonder what the hell is going on with Wendy these days. Like, it's, like, it's got to be a lot going on with Wendy. I think Wendy might need to take some time away from the show. Like, damn. Like, that was, you could have said, you know, this, his name is Swavy, Swavy, by the way. You could have said, hey, you guys, do you know this young man named Swavy? He has, you know, so many followers on TikTok. And then, you know, you could have said, you know, unfortunately you know he was gunned down whatever i don't know what happened i think he was gunned down but there are so many ways you could have went around you could have went about saying that instead of saying it the way that she did it and like i said last week with the tabitha brown wendy like and i just said it a few minutes ago wendy is going through a lot and i just don't know what it is i don't know if wendy's going through a depression i don't know if wendy's got back on that shit or what like it's just something really off with wendy these last i mean these last few months interesting right like I was just confused about that like it just didn't honestly it just didn't make any sense like you spoke I mean you spoke so negatively about that kid like it just wasn't it wasn't right what she it just wasn't right to me but I don't agree like I said I don't agree with the family about one of her canceled and I see a lot of people on social media that want some Wendy canceled let me know if you guys think that Wendy should be canceled like what do you guys think and for the family to be seeking legal res representation there's literally nothing that can be done i mean we know how wendy is wendy says what wendy wants to say and wendy's does not apologize for it it would be the, the nice and respectful thing to do is be like you know um guys i may have misspoke when i talked about swavy but we all know that wendy is not going to do that unfortunately and that's the sad part but let me know what you guys think about it and we're going to move on you guys All right, you guys, next up, what do we want to talk about next? Let's see what we're talking about next. All right, Jerry O'Connell. So you guys know, so you guys are familiar with Jerry O'Connell. I know he's, like when Wendy's been off, he's, he's hosted the Wendy Williams show. I think Jerry O'Connell even had his own show that Wendy was producing, but I don't know what happened to it. Damn that fly. I don't know what happened to it. Um... Did it ever premiere? Like, I don't know. So, so, I say all that to say, Jerry O'Connell has now landed a new role. An interesting one at that. So, Jerry O'Connell is going to be the first male co-host on the, um, the talk show, The Talk, on CBS. He is replacing Sharon Osbourne. And you guys remember Sharon Osbourne. She left earlier this year because of the whole situation that happened after with the fallout from what Piers Morgan said about Prince, um, you know, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah Winfrey. And you guys remember she came onto the talk. She defended him. She had her, you know, her, her little, her little spat with Cheryl, right? So she left the talk and now they've replaced her with Jerry O'Connell. Very interesting, I would say, I would say. And it's kind of making me wonder what's, because you guys know, I just talked about this last week with The View. You guys know that on The View, Meghan McCain is leaving The View. So it makes me wonder, like, what's, what is going to happen with The View? <laughs> now, I've, I, I haven't watched a talk on CBS in so many, in some years now. The last time I watched a talk was when Julie was on the talk. And that's been, God, that was season 20 of Big Brother. And we're on season 23 of Big Brother. So that's been at least three. That's been three years now. Damn this fly. So yeah, that's the last time I actually, I stopped watching talk long before that. I stopped watching talk long before that. I think I watched the talk when I was in college. And after I graduated college, I stopped watching it. And I graduated college in 2013. So that's, so it's been years since I watched the talk. But like I said, Jerry O'Connell joining the talk as a co-host. What do you guys think about it? Do you think you guys think that'll mess up the dynamic? What do you think? Like, let me know what you guys think about that. And let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that The View would do something similar? Like, with 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 Meghan McCain now leaving The View. Let me know what you guys think, what, what you guys think about that. I, I still think it's a little interesting that Jerry O'Connell, they chose Jerry O'Connell. I mean, he, I guess the plot wants to be on camera. He's, I mean, I saw him host the Wendy Williams show, and he's done a good job on the Wendy Williams show, so I guess he could, but like I just said, he had his own show, from what I remember. Jerry had his own show that Wendy was producing. Hmm. 
let's move on. All right, you guys, next up, did you guys see on Instagram, well, I saw it on Instagram, but it came from TikTok. Did you guys see the Victoria's Secret Karen? Baby, when I tell you, my, my big, my little cousin, oh God, that fly is just gonna drive me nuts. I think it's because of the light. So my little cousin, she's on TikTok. She's been trying to get me on TikTok for a long time. She's like, Jerome, you should get on TikTok. I don't think so. So she was watching it, and I think I was, I think this was Monday when I was watching Love and Hip Hop and writing my notes down. And she was like, no, what was I doing? Because I was in her room and I forgot what I was doing. But she was on TikTok and she was talking about the, she was talking about this lady, as, you know, this lady is running around this store looking crazy. So then I got on Instagram and I saw it on follower alert. So the Karen, she really tried it. So the black lady was filming her, right? And she went up and charged and attacked the black lady. And then when, I guess when she realized that she was being recorded, that's when she started playing the victim and everything. And I was just like, I was like, girl, I know you joking. And she, I mean, she really played the fucking victim. I was, and then when she got down on that ground, I was like, girl, get your ass up. Like you attacked her, but now you want to be the victim. Like, where they do that at? Like, you attack somebody. You come and attack me. See, that black woman was better than me because I would be, I would have recorded Karen and beat Karen's ass. And then that other white lady that was telling her to leave. Like, um, no, ma'am. She attacked me. I'm going to wait here for security to come. And I know that, they, actually, I know that they're investigating that right now. <laughs> it's, it, these white people have lost their damn minds. The white people are losing their minds, like literally. You attacked that woman, and now you want to sit here and play the damn victim. Are you serious? You want to play the victim like she had the phone up to you, like you saw her, and you swatted at her, and then you sitting here crying, telling her, to turn the camera off, turn the camera off. No, boo-boo. That is assault. That's assault. So I'm not turning the camera off. You know, you should have thought about that before you came up in my face. But like I said, the black woman, she's better than me. Because Karen would have been picking her teeth up off the motherfucking ground. Because I would have beat the brakes off that woman. Period. Point blank. I'm sorry to be spitting y'all face. But Karen would have got beat down. Like, really? You charge her and then you start playing the victim? That was what threw me. Was when she started playing the victim. But then what really threw me was when the woman laid her ass on the ground and started kicking and wailing like a child. <laughs> the, audac some, the audacity of white people. Not all white people, but some of them. The pure audacity of white people. Again, like I said, she's lucky that she met the right person. Like, I always want a Karen or a Ken to try me. I'd be wanting that so badly. But I guess God says, no, my son, because I know how you are, and I don't want you in that situation. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about the Victoria's Secret Karen. And we are going to wrap it up, you guys. All right, you guys. And this is going to be some small talk, so it's not going to be much. So in a little bit of divorce news, Babyface and his wife are getting divorced. Didn't see that one coming. But I mean, we don't know what goes on in these people's lives. Um, yeah, that's sad. Their kids are grown, right? So they don't have to worry about spouses. They don't have to worry about child support, but they will have to worry about spousal support. Hopefully that the divorce doesn't get ugly because, I mean, he is worth a lot. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is Lamar Odom and Tristan Thompson. I saw that on the show. I saw it. Where did I see that at last week? Because I saw it where Chloe posted a picture and Lamar came up under the comment section and he commented on it, right? Then Tristan came up under his comment with like God saved your life or something, God brought you through this or something, but basically making a threat to Lamar. I'm like, really, Tristan? Who? And I tweeted, I, I put in the comment section, like, girl, who is scared of you? Absolutely nobody. Like, Tristan doesn't frighten anybody. And the fact that now y'all want to profess, you know, y'all want to profess that y'all want her or whatnot, but Tristan, you continuously cheat on her. Lamar, 
you didn't treat her right either. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fans of the Kardashians. I've never even watched the episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but y'all can't treat the women, especially Tristan. Like, dude, you ain't never treated her right. You treat her like a doormat at this point. Like, I don't know what that woman, I don't know what's going to take for her to wake up and realize Tristan is no good for her. But whatever. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about all the topics we discussed today, this week. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and um, hit that notification bell button. As always, you guys, we do this at the same time, same place, same channel. And, um, yeah, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, wear your mask or not, socially distance, and be blessed with you guys. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Like I said, today is my birthday. So I am actually, literally, today is my birthday. I think um, I think it's almost midnight here in Texas. So it's, you know, it's almost my birthday. So I'm off of here. I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upload this video on my birthday. So you guys will see this between nine and 10 a.m. tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will see you guys again for Love at the Lockup. I will see you guys for Growing Up Hip Hop on Saturday morning. And then I'll see you guys again Saturday night for a brand new season of um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. So until then, you guys stay, like I said, be safe, you guys, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.